if you don't know much about the Korean martyrs whose, um, whose feast day we celebrate today, they are made up of 103 martyrs. Um, so we've heard of the main priest, uh, Andrew, and Paul, the second name there, and he was a seminarian. But the far majority of the Korean martyrs were lay people. And as I look around the chapel today, yeah, mostly lay people. Interesting. Wow. How we're all called to be saints. We're all called to be co-workers and collaborators with the mission of evangelization, helping people come to know that God has sent his son Jesus to save us from our sins and to be our bridge to eternal life. And I love how our gospel from Luke chapter 8 helps to remind us that Jesus' work was possible because of the help of many lay people, especially women, that accompanied him and supported them out of their own resources. Many times I think in the church we can focus on the work to be done by the priests, by the deacons, by the seminarians, by the specialists, by those who have been trained and have all of the credentials and titles and and training to do all of the church's work and I'll, you know, I'll help out here and there. Then again, I don't know you, so this is nothing directly to you. I'm speaking to uh, everyone. But for all of us to have the mindset that this work cannot be accomplished or at least cannot achieve the effectiveness of our natural gifts and spiritual gifts and resources unless everyone takes direct ownership of the mission. It's beautiful to see how the lay people were responsible for many of the conversions that led to the the saints that we celebrate today in the Korean martyrs. And there's one sticking point with St. John Vianney, patron for priests, that the Korean martyrs uh, show a different example. St. John Vianney would say, emphasizing how important the priesthood and the Eucharist is, that if there were no priests and there were no Eucharist, that the people would begin to worship, you know, a tree or an animal or something like that. They would lose all sense of, of right religion. And I would say that may happen, and I think he was speaking from direct experience serving after the French Revolution, where there was so much secularism. However, if the people are intent, if their hunger for God is strong, and if they do what they can, don't worry about expert titles, but let me just share with you what I have. And if that's a little bit, share 100% of your little bit. There are... Uh, martyrs among them, including a gentleman who took the name Augustine, who found a scrap of a Christian literature writing inside of a chest in his home. It had been bought or donated, and that was a common way that you would use like almost like a paper mache inside of a chest, use old newspapers and old things. Well, someone had taken pages out of a Christian text, and he, he saw something very intriguing, talking about this spirit and God and being created. And so he was a government official and went out seeking Christians. Now, you can imagine if Christianity is illegal at this time and people are trying to find Christians, you'd be a little suspicious of a government official. But he's like, no, this is speaking about something that relates to my longing. So finally, a Christian took the risk and brought him in, gave him the full text. And as he was reading the text about the spiritual life, he said, this is the truth. It was the first time he had heard that we have a soul. When he came to learn that we're more than just biology and cells and DNA and vessels and muscles, when he heard that we we're created with a soul, he said, this must be the truth. And he was taught, mentored by this one other Korean and uh, he began to learn and read and study. He began to share the faith clandestinely until he had a whole group of people that were being formed in, as Christians and they weren't even baptized yet. They had to take advantage of a government trip to China and secretly meet with the bishop during one of the breaks in the trip and ask to be baptized. And the bishop, as you can imagine, was a little suspicious. Who are these Koreans? And they say that they've had all this formation. So he started quizzing them. Well, tell me, wh what about the Trinity? Tell me, tell me what you believe about this, about that. And he was amazed, amazed at the faith that they had. 
and what they had done evangelizing, not even having been baptized. My brothers and sisters, if they are a comp- if they are capable of that much mission work, how much more are we capable of with the resources we have and the graces that we have received in the sacraments? I want to just uh, conclude with one final reflection from St. Augustine, actually from today's Liturgy of the Hours, a a prayer that priests and and deacons and such pray. Let, Let this be a reminder for us who are maybe statistically not likely going to be blood martyrs, literally giving up our life for the faith, but we're called to be white martyrs, people who live self-denial and penance, putting God and others first, offering up uh, the discomfort of that penance to be uh, very meritorious and fruitful for the intentions that we're praying for uh, in, in the world. And St. Augustine says this, and if you don't like suffering, I'll raise my hand, This is a good reminder. Christians must imitate Christ's sufferings, not set their hearts on pleasures. He who is weak will be strengthened when told, yes, expect the temptations of this world, but the Lord will deliver you from them all if your heart has not abandoned him. For it was was to strengthen your heart that he came to suffer and die came to be spit upon and crowned with thorns, came to be accused of shameful things. Yes, came to be fastened to the wood of the cross. All these things he did for you, and you did nothing. He did them not for himself, but for you. But what sort of shepherds are they who fear for giving offense, not only fail to prepare the sheep for the temptations that threaten but even promise them worldly happiness. So think of prosperity gospel preachers or even priests who just, you know, skirt around the cross. God himself made no such promise to this world. On the contrary, God foretold hardships upon hardships in this world until the end of time. And you want the Christian to be exempt from these troubles? Precisely because we are Christians, We are destined to suffer more in this world.